and learning to get started. Okay, starting my time right now, I'd of course like to thank everyone for making this debate possible. My opponents, my partner, Justin, for filming in the judges. So the, so the resolution we have today is the United States federal government should substantially increase food aid to North Korea. In this speech, I'm first going to be defining everything in the resolution, setting this debate up, then going into some background information about the status quo, presenting our plan, and then stating all of our benefits. It's going to be pretty straightforward. So most of this round is uh, pretty self-explanatory looking at the resolution. Um, so we're going to be making this a policy round with net benefits to the United States, so whichever side can prove that they will be helping the United States out more should be winning this debate. And so most of it is already pretty straightforward. It's going to be taken contextually, substantially increased as an increase the amount of food going into the uh, food aid going to North Korea. We're going to explain that a little bit more in our plan text. So currently in the status quo, 25% of North Korea's GDP goes to its military. Compare that to 3 to 4% in the United States and 2% in most of Europe. So really we can see that North Korea is hugely putting most of its money into the military and really not supporting its people enough. All of the food aid currently in North Korea goes to the military. The government's really ignoring the people and their way to survive. There's been a famine in North Korea since the 1990s, and 3.5 million people have already died. And the UN predicts that 6 million people are currently at risk of dying of malnutrition in North Korea right now. So we could really see that there's a lot of damage going on in North Korea because there's not enough food able to survive. There's a lot of civil unrest because of this, and the government's really cracking down on the amount on the population and really just acting more violently because of this. So with that being said, our plan text will be, a, we're going to be uh, passing uh, the uh, leak day agreement that was not passed, that uh, failed to pass in the past, which essentially says that 2,400 tons of food will be administered by foreign aid programs uh, into North Korea. Our time frame will be as soon as possible, and this is the best time frame to do it right now, because currently North Korea is in the international spotlight. Waiting would be bad, because doing this now increases the uh, amount of attention that North Korea gets in the world. It puts more pressure on the government from the international community, and it will also um, show that the United States has a more, more peaceful outlook looking at North Korea since that North, um, missile has just happened. It's not that, it, it, it presents the image that we're not trying to harm North Korea or try to be militarily uh, active or be the police of the world. It shows that we want to help reduce property and help save lives and produce a better image. So with that being said, our funding will be, I'll get through our plan text and answer your question. Our funding will be coming through the State Department budget right now and all of that, and it will be passed through normal ways and means. I'll take a question now. Oh, it's answered. All right. So with that being said, we have three benefits that come from this. Our first contention is that it increases relationships with North Korea. So we can see that currently the United States and North Korea obviously are extremely hostile towards each other. There's a huge amount of animosity and almost violence going on between the two countries. Um, so we can see that what this will do is increase our relationship with North Korea as we will be helping them out and uh, be able to survive more. Also, since there's going to be more United States uh, role in North Korea, that means that the United States is going to be able to see what's going on and have to see what's happening more. Currently, the United States does not even have an embassy in North Korea. We really are completely shut out to what's going on in the world. But we can see that by having food aid people work there and more involvement in North Korea, that means that we have eyes and ears in North Korea. This is good because then we're able to... Um, uh, this is good because it means that we are able to see what's going on. I'd like to make it clear we're not supporting the government or trying to overthrow the government. We're just providing food aid. However, we have more knowledge to what's going on inside of North Korea. We can see that uh, the way the government's acting, the way it's acting towards its people and other things like that, the way its nuclear programs are going, uh, we'd have a better eye into everything that's happening there, which will ultimately lead to an increased amount of national security as North Korea is considered hostile, and it will also um, improve our diplomatic relations with the entire world. Our second contention is that it will help our relationship with China. We can see that right now in the status quo, huge amounts of North Korean refugees are flooding into China. China has said repeatedly to the international community and to North Korea that it does not want to deal with all the huge amounts of refugees that's happening. It's being overwhelmed. So what's happening is China is currently unhappy with North Korea. This is a time for the United States to improve its relationship with, North, uh, with China because by at providing more food aid, there will be less refugees and China will have to spend less amount of money uh, supporting North Korea. This is good because when our relationship with China is better, that means really the entire world economy improves. China is really completely dependent on the United States and the United States is dependent on its um, on China, so when we have better relationships, both of our economies are able to flourish, help the United States economy improve. There's a specific example that will actually provide a political advantage too. We can see that right now, China is currently supporting the old Syrian regime, and the United States is trying to uh, spend more time overthrowing it, so there will be a political advantage there, as the United States and North Korea will be more on the same page and improve their diplomatic relations, and we can see benefits in that area of the world as well. So there's a clear benefit to both our relationship with North Korea in our first contention and our second contention it will help our relationship with China, two very important major uh, Asian countries that we don't have very good relationships right now. And our final contention is that we'll be improving the quality of life of North Korea with, um, of the North Korean people. 
This is good for two reasons. The first is that it improves the United States image. It shows again, as I said before, right after the missile has been launched, it shows that the United States is not the police of the world trying to get involved in military and everywhere. It shows that the United States is more concerned with improving the quality of human life throughout the entire world. This is better and improves our image in the long term. When our image is better with countries, especially hostile countries like North Korea, that means that there will be an increase in national security internationally, and also our uh, di diplomacy will improve as well. Also, it will serve to stabilize the population, which means that North Korea will stop acting so violently. We can see that when the population is in unrest because there's not enough food or something like that, that means that the North Korean government reacts more power, more strongly towards the people and internationally. Most of the big moves China, uh, North Korea has made, I'm sorry, in terms of its nuclear program, have been after huge amounts of protests by the North Korean people. So what this is doing is really lowering the amount of civil unrest and the amount of chaos that's happening in North Korea. As I said, we're not trying to overthrow North Korea or support it in any way, but stabilizing it will mean that it will be less aggressive internationally and less aggressive towards its own people, which will be saving lives in the long term and really improving the quality of life internationally and in the United States. So just to go over everything before I close, the United States federal government will substantially increase the food aid to North Korea as soon as possible, and that's the best time frame because it puts more uh, attention on North Korea and it shows that we want to help them. Our funding will come from the State Department, and it will be passed through normal ways and means. 2,400 tons of food will be passed, and this will help because it will increase our, in, our relationship with North Korea, it will help our relationship with China long term, and increase stability in North Korea and improve the quality of life there. So for all of these reasons, I just strongly agree with the government. Thank you. Okay, is everyone ready? Yeah. So, starting my time, I'd like to thank everyone in attendance for being here and just jump right into the roadmap. So, first, I'm going to go into the terms set up by the government team. We're going to discuss an agreement with those ultimately, then go into about their three contentions and then provide our own two contentions. So, with that, I'll come. Um, I'll begin. So they, we agree with our terms substantially increase food aid to North Korea and their, and their net benefits to the United States. And I'd like, just like to remind you that when they state that the, United, that the net benefits are to the U.S. in this round, you should not consider any benefits to North Korea, the country, any other country in the world, or to the North Koreans as individuals. I just want to remind you that at the beginning of this round so we can all keep that in mind. So going into their contentions, their first contention is that we will increase our relationship with North Korea. They talk about how we had no embassy and how we have all these hostile relations, but they never really provide, stated a clear link as to why this would change. You know, if we um, send them back food. Yes, the government wants this food aid. However, that's not, that doesn't mean that our relationship is going to improve in any other ways. In times before, we have given them food aid through the United States and through other bodies, such as the United Nations, through NATO, and we haven't seen an increase in relationship. We haven't seen them be welcoming towards our inspectors or, our, or um, you know, a lot of our ideology. We haven't seen this happen before. So they were hostile. They continue to be hostile all throughout our, our relationships. This is kind of a non-unique issue that our relationship isn't good with North Korea. And um, furthermore, embassies don't help you. Embassies in a lot of countries that we don't agree with politically, that they have political disagreements. We still don't have a lot of meetings even when we have those embassies. And they've never allowed, they haven't allowed our inspectors in yet. Even when we do make good agreements with North Korea, we don't see any, benefit, any of the same benefits that they say. So we really can't continue to um, think that this is a relevant point because they haven't had any information to back it up to support that we, our relationship will increase. And so this won't make any, any change to the status quo. What will happen is that it will be worse for the United States for, um, for a variety of reasons, for our stability and our power in the region. And I'll go into that when I go into our contentions. Their second point was that it will help the United States' relationship with China. However, this is kind of a, um, a weak link, saying that if we help um, North Korea stabilize, we'll help China. It's more of an impact to their second point, that China helps North Korea. I mean, North Korea helps China, but I'll, but I'll discuss this anyway. So first of all, China doesn't need this economic help. It doesn't need North Korea to be a stable country for it to be a prosperous nation. China had something crazy like 9% growth over the last year, and so they really don't need this growth that's coming from this. And furthermore, even if we help North Korea, our relationship with China would not increase, because that isn't the main important thing of our relationship with China, is our discussion with the ideology around the world and our food aid to various countries. The main thing we do in our relationship with, with China is economic. We do a lot of trade with them, we do a lot of working, we set up factories there. And so our relationship with China is kind of completely irrelevant to our relationship with North Korea. And so the things that the United States might, if the United States were to gain anything with their relationship with North Korea, those things wouldn't translate into our relationship with China because our relationship with China is primarily economic. And those, thing, and those things are, wouldn't have any effect on the North Korea agreements. Furthermore, they, so they have, their impact of this was that China will no longer support the Assad regime in Syria. However, firstly, this wouldn't make this wouldn't have any difference considering um, Russia, which is in the UN Security Council, would still oppose him. So there would be no change in terms of UN Security Council changes because they have, Russia has veto power. So it wouldn't change anything there. But uh, furthermore, China will not oppose Assad just because we give North Korea food aid. The links to this were so sketchy that you really can't take this. Furthermore, China has lo have a long-standing um, commitment to Assad to supporting his regime, and so. We, 
they're really not going to change this just because we give food aid to North Koreans. Their third contention is that it improves the quality of life of North Koreans. They first talked about the U.S. image because it makes the United States look good to give other countries food, but really what this does is it makes the U.S. United States look weak because we just, like three days ago, we said, uh, or a week ago, we just said, oh no, we're going to stop their food aid because they launched a missile, which they weren't supposed to do under our trade agreement. So what, what actually what this does, it means that the United States is going back on what it said before and saying, oh, never mind, we'll give you food aid, just like a week after we decide to stop. So it really makes the United States look wishy-washy in terms of foreign policy, not doing things that are beneficial for itself. I'll go into this more on my contentions. Their second point was stability, that North Korea will stabilize and that that is good. But first, they, they said in their... In the harms of status quo, the, money, the majority of the food goes to the military that's abused. This is also one of our contentions, the, um, the detriments of this. But is there, they're, they're agreeing with this that many, much of the food does not go to the people, so that will not increase the stability in North Korea. Uh, furthermore, um, the people who are getting the food aid, if you do believe that the food aid is going directly to the people, those people aren't the ones who are aggressive in foreign policy. The, the, those um, you know, impoverished North Koreans who are getting this food aid, if you believe that impoverished North Koreans are getting the food aid at all, those people aren't the ones who are doing aggressive foreign policy. Those are the dictators of, Korea, of North Korea who are really trying to stabilize, and those people aren't being benefited by this plan. So now I'm going to go into our own two contentions. Our first is that we uphold negotiating power, and our second is that the regime, uh, is that the regime abuses the food aid, and so we shouldn't give it to them just based on that. So our first intention is that we will uphold the United States negotiating power. So since the 1950s invasion of the South, um, the United States and other international bodies really haven't taken any major punitive measures against North Korea. We really haven't done anything big to oppose them. Even though we oppose a lot of their decisions, a lot of the foreign policy they do, we've just let them do all of these sorts of things. And so what we do with it, we, in February, they agreed to suspend uranium enrichment, nuclear tests, and long-range missile tests. Um, so that we would give them this food aid, the 240,000 tons. But then a, a month and a half later, they went and launched a missile, so they broke this agreement. But So if we just say, oh, okay, well, if you broke the agreement, we're breaking it too, we're not going to stick to the agreement when it failed. Well, you know, the agreement hasn't failed, they just broke the agreement. So we need to maintain that, maintain that strong front. And so if we can do that, then we're um, up, up, upholding our power in the relationship, because we're saying that even if North Korea is going to break the agreement, we're going to maintain it, we're going to not send them that food aid, because they had previously agreed to those conditions, they, those conditions. They understand that when they launched the missile, they were no longer going to get food aid. So we need to uphold our power in the relationship by saying <coughs> the United States is not going to give them this. So, um, but furthermore, going back, um, further than going just against the previous agreement, it gives North Korea the dominance in the relationship. It makes them think, well, we can do anything. The United States is not going to hold to any of its agreements, which kind of undermines all of the agreements we make with North Korea, all our foreign policy decisions involving North Korea and all those other countries that we um, oppose. It will show other countries, such as Iran, that we're not going to stick with our war. That, you know, if, if we see that, oh, okay, I guess our agreement isn't going to work, that we're just going to drop it, but that's really not the base we need to have. We need to have a strong front against these countries, the ideologies we, that we disagree with. So, um, you know, because what they're going to do if we allow this to happen, they're just going to keep their we weapon program going and be getting this food aid. A lot, a lot of the food aid allows the regime to continue building these weapons because it means that they don't have to spend the money giving food to the people. And so it hurts our allies as well. When, they're, when um, the United States and its allies, when they're giving food to the people, I mean, when they're giving, um, when, when they're working on their weapons program, because what it means is they're increasing their weapons, they're testing them, you know, they're going to hit them in, on other countries eventually. So that hurts our allies. Our partner's going to go to the impact of this further. Our second contention is that the regime opposes food, abuses the food aid. So like recently, the, you know, the United Nations, who we understand isn't the United States, is bringing in food aid. The, the North Korean army held up held the people giving food aid at gunpoint and stole the food. They stole 5,000 5, tons of food. This shows that, they're, that the military is just doing all these final things to take the food. It's happened as well to United States people. However, that's a recent example. The government is saving all this money, and they're using this, and what they're doing is they're also with the food, they're selling on the domestic markets, they're trading it with other countries, and they're just redistributing it to other countries. All this information is from CNN. So they're not taking the aid and giving it to the right people, the people who deserve it. And so this means that the United States policy objectives are not achieved. It's a waste of money, and we're supporting corruption within the government. So for these reasons, I heard a strong vote in favor of the opposition team. that for someone to decide opposition's case in the MAC and decide governments. Um, so the first contention by side opposition was about negotiation power where the U.S. stands. Um, I'd like to say that what we're doing right now is currently giving exactly what the regime is wanting. They want us to back off and stay away and not give aid to them whatsoever so they can continue to oppress the people um, so that they don't get more political power. So really that's what we're seeing, that if we hold back and decide not to give the aid, 
that all we're doing is saying, okay, the, to the um, North Korean government that it's fine, you're allowed to continue to oppress your people. So we're giving them what they want in an odd way. So we have to look to who we're really trying to help here. We're trying to help the oppressed people so that they get more power, so they're able to be in the government and have some sense. We can't just look to say, oh, we're trying to um, harm the government and oppress the people and continue on in that way. But as far as negotiating power, we have to look at how this is going to help our world image and the long-term impacts that are going to come out of this and the political advantages that we're going to receive. Um, so first, we're looking at the um, power and the world image that the U.S. has. We're still going in after a detriment to give food aid. That's what we're focusing on. We're not focusing on the political power. Yes, it's going to get the size and ears, but we're not trying to completely um, to overthrow the regime. And you look at this in a positive light, we're going to see that this is going to allow us to give some ears and insight that could open diplomatic options so we can really see what's going on. Um, in the world. This is the perfect time to do it because they are open, they are vulnerable, they are being watched by the entire um, world. So this is the time to intervene, this is time to look into um, North Korea and help the people and at the same time get some political advantages, not just with North Korea but with um, other countries. I'll take your one or two contentions. So when your partners discussing the status quo, we said that money, most of the money is going to the military. And the yeah, I'll, I'll the military. Worry about that. So why, yeah. would, why is it that they don't want okay. to do it? Yeah, I understand. So, please, yeah. so a lot of the current packages that have gone into North Korea have all been financed packages. They have not been actually tangible food. So one thing that the um, United States is doing for this um, leap, uh, leap agreement is that actually giving tangible food. We're not giving money directly to the government. That's a key factor in this debate, and thank you for bringing that up. What they're doing is it's tangible food. It's tons of food. It's not money and finance. The one issue that a lot of countries and other aid services have um, uh, actually had to pay the consequences for is that the money goes directly to the government. What side our um, case inside government is offering that we're getting tons of food so we're able to distribute directly to the people and that's not going to the military because the funding therefore is able to go to the military. How we're doing this is we're having um, our foreign aid people go in and actually okay serve the food and then the military is not going to get a hold of it. We don't want to put more money and more power in the government. So it's a clear factor that this is going directly to the people and not going to be financed in um, to um, the military. And again, this is a perfect time to do this because they are being watched by the world's eye. They aren't going to be able to be slipping food and having more um, uprisings. I'll take your one contention later if I have time to sit down. Their second contention is about um, uh, they're uh, using food aid. Again, I just talked about this. We are getting actual tangible food, not financing, so it's not going to go to the military and give them political leverage. So what we need to do, again, is take away from the military power and actually give food and aid to the, directly to the people. As my partner talked about, these people have been in one of the worst famines since the 1990s. We can't continue to allow this um, regime to oppress these people and not give them assistance. So I'm going to get more into our case now. Our first contention is about that it's going to increase our relations with North Korea. Now I'd like to make it clear, we're not trying to go in and overthrow the government. This gives us a way to see what's going on, continue to give the, um, uh, allow the world to have their eyes on what's happening, and that we know that they're not going to want to be distribu distributing food and having more uprising by um, passing it along because they're on the world's stage. So really we see that this is going to give us eyes and ears so we can really see what's going on with their technology, where they're standing with their missiles. We're allowing the people that are being oppressed to have some advantage not to be in a famine that's been lasting through the 90s. Um, and really they're not receiving any resources right now. Um, so now really we see that it's tangible food. It's going directly to the people. And which showing again that the U.S. world image point that we're there to aid people and that we're willing to take a stance in a hard time when a lot of countries are willing um, just to sit back and relax. Um, our second contention is that it's going to help relations with China. Again, this is key. China has been consistently asking how do we deal with this because they've been getting millions of refugees over the past years who are trying to escape from North Korea. What this is doing is not making China angry. They're consistently get, are getting more angry um, about this. So it's showing that we're willing to take a stance and assist them. Now, um, side opposition says that we're only involved with economic status, but econo economics is based on trust. Economics is based on founding in that you're trusting the other country. By doing this, it's showing that we're not just helping them economically, we're willing to help them in other areas. Um, and that, again, builds trust relations. We looked at the Great Depression, the reason why the economy didn't stand is because there was no trust. So this is going to increase world trust, showing that we have are able just not to focus on the economy, but we're also able to focus on the people and not allow the um, North Korean government to get what they want, allowing um, the U.S. and all the other countries to pull out and not give aid. That's what they wanted. They probably didn't want the leave, leave agreement whatsoever because they know they're going to have to have U.S. relations, right? So you have to look at this in a whole scheme. They agreed to it. They shot the missile so that the government could pull out and not give aid. What we're doing is saying we're going to consistently give aid to um, the oppressed people. 
Um, so, and again, China's a big world leader. I know we talked about Syria and the political advantage there. If we have China on our side, that's a huge political leader that will sway Russia to some extent. You have to look at that a big thing. Russia, again, will be the only country who is against this. Having China on the U.S. side and on the same page is a huge advantage to solve the Syrian regime. That would, that's really going to um, stop a lot of the um, issues uh, arriving in the Middle East. With Syria, we're also going to see that more um, political issues that are occurring there are going to suppress um, and so forth. Our third contention, again, I'll, please, I'll take it later. Um, our third contention is about improving life of North Korea. What we're seeing is the U.S. The US image is going to be improved, and we're also going to stabilize the population so that those people are able to be more active, not have um, the North Korean regime weighed down on them. And then in long-term impasse, if we continue to allow North Korea um, to, um, to oppress their people and could shoot missiles, we're going to see more issues um, conflicting with North Korea and South Korea. We are allies with South Korea, which means the U.S. in, in the long term would have to get involved with that. So by aiding these people right now and getting involved right now while North Korea is in the spotlight, this can um, stop world issues that when if South Korea and North Korea are going to go um, have a, a conflict and a war, that the U.S. is going to have to get involved down the line. So really what this is doing is getting involved now, having the eyes and ears to see what is occurring within the regime. Um, but not trying to really overthrow it, just giving assistance and aid to the people. And hopefully down the line we're able to see that these people now that they're actually being heard, being voiced, that they can hopefully have people in power who are going to be able to help them in their government and give them what, so, um, what they would like. So for all these reasons, I would just strongly vote in favor side government. Thank you. Roadmap. First of all, I'm going to go into our opponent's contentions, and then I'll quickly go into our own. So first off, I'd like to talk about the first intention, because really I think in this round it has come out to be the most important. Basically, both sides, we're both saying that by doing this, we're increasing the United States' Um, we're making the United States have a more powerful relationship with North Korea. What, what um, our opponents are saying is that by giving this food aid, we are increasing our relationship with North Korea. They have also stated some uh, inconsistencies when they are saying that North Korea does not want this food aid, when really, in actuality, they very much want this food aid, because it is actually money. It is money going to North Korea in, in, in food. So basically what you have when you actually give this money to North Korea, when you give this food aid to North Korea, is you are appeasing the North Korean government. The United States had this agreement in February to give 240,000 tons of, to, of food aid to North Korea, and then just a week later, you, the North Korea went against this agreement by launching a missile. This completely terminated the agreement because they went against the stated, the stated um, terms of the agreement. So they went against the agreement, and that's why the United States is ending it, because we're not going to appease North Korea. We're not going to say, yes, we'll give you food aid, and then, you, and then North Korea flaunts this and goes dangerously, and dangerously launches a missile, a missile that if they get this missile technology can be fired against the United States, and then the United States says, okay, we're going to suspend food aid, and then three days later we say, actually, we're going to give it back to you. This makes the United States look weak in the world, in the, in the global community, and it appeases the North Korean government. Secondly, any food that goes to North Korea and any food that goes to North Korean people benefits the North Korean government. What the North Korean government is trying to create is an illusion to its people that every country bends to the power of North Korean government. That is why in last week when there was a missile launch, the North Korean government invited tons of people from all around the world, tons of press, to, walk, to, to film this event because they want to make it look like to their people that every country, including the United States, is inferior to North Korea. So if we were going to give more food aid to North Korea, we were going to give, we were going to make the people happy, make the people North Korea, and make it, and the North Korean government can make it look like to the people like they are winning, like every country is bending to North Korea, and we will see more increased su support for the North Korean government, a dangerous North Korean government that is firing with missiles, that is working on nukes, and that actively is seeking the destruction of South Korea. Now, of course, we're an ally to South Korea, and if any war happens between North and South Korea, the United States troops will have to go in, and this means ending United States troop, uh, ending United States lives. So this will not increase the, um, our, our relationship with North Korea, and actually will put North Korea above the United States. It will put, the, it will put us in a relationship when we are bending to North Korea's demands. Um, secondly, any, or thirdly, any food aid I'll get, excuse me, I'll get to that later. Um, next, I'd like to address this contention about helping the relationship with China. 
Now, as my partner pointed out, this, there's kind of a weak link to this to this contention. And also, I'd like to point out that China is one of North Korea's only is one of North Korea's only allies. And what our partners are saying is that we should help North Korea here because it will make China less angry angry with North Korea. Why is it bad for the United States? Why is it bad for the net benefits of the United States if China is angry at North Korea? If China is angry at North Korea, they will continually begin to isolate North Korea more and more and more so that North Korea will no longer have this powerful ally of China. And soon, North Korea will be isolated in the, in the global community, whereas they have to bend to everyone's demands. It will be everyone against North Korea, and then we will see a much less, a much less powerful North Korea. However, if we were to help, why would we help North Korea? Why would we help China and North Korea's relationship? Any enemy, if China is an enemy with North Korea, and we are an enemy of North Korea, it helps our relationship. It helps us to it helps us to be more superior than North Korea and get our demands across. And it helps the United States to be safe from this nuclear power, this irrational actor that is actively seeking not only the destruction of South Korea but the destruction of the United States. Now, the third contention is helping the quality of life of North Korean people. Again, I'd like to point out that the only benefits in this round have to go to the Americans, so you cannot really vote on this round whether or not North Korean people will have a better life. And I'd also like to point out that even in the status quo given by the first government speaker, he stated that food aid goes directly to the military. Now, how does it help the United? How does it help the people of North Korea, or does it help the people of the United States if we get food aid to North Korea and it goes directly to helping the military? Nowhere in the plan of the first government speaker was there anything addressed about United States citizens going in and distributing this food aid directly to the citizens. This is new information that was brought up in the second speaker of the government team. So therefore, this was never given in the original plan, and they are changing their plan when they see flaws in it. And so this plan does not stand. Conventionally, when the United States gives food aid to a country, they send the food aid, and the United and the, go the government of North Korea does what it, what it wants, and all this food aid goes directly to the military. So, in, a, in essence, what the United States is doing here is it is funding the North Korean military. It is giving them money in the form of food, so that the North Korean military has more money to make nuclear weapons that will destroy the United States and will destroy South Korea. Yes. I'd like to point out for clarification, we have what we meant with about the food resources going was that all the current uh, for, uh, domestic food resources are going to the military, not to the rest of the public. I, I not that. that all the aid as my partner stated, there have been plenty of times when North Korean military has even gone in front of the United Nations watchdogs, actively with guns, taken food aid away from the people and given it straight to the military. So any money that goes to North Korea in terms of food aid essentially goes to the North Korean military, uh, uh, which is an irrational military. Now, our first contention was that of negotiating power, and as I stated, this is kind of the big, the big contention here. What we are saying is that by not giving the North Korean military food aid, we are not appeasing them. The United States looks weak to the world, and it looks weak to every other, um, to every anti-United States power out there, Iran. Um, if we give them, if we appease them. Three days ago, we said we're not giving food aid, and now, right now, we're going to say yes. Actually, we're going to bend to your demands. This really makes us look weak, and this makes North Korea say. In the future, we have more room to operate. In the future, we can test this plan, we can test nuclear weapons, and we can use nuclear weapons, and the United States won't do anything. This is where, thi this is where things like world wars start, when we start appeasing countries. If we go down this path, this could be the end of millions of American lives in the future. Now, our next contention, I briefly touched on this, but this is also about how most food aid goes directly to the military. The military actively takes this food aid from the people, or it just directly gives it to the people, and then this means that there will be more money because the military is getting money in the terms of in the form of food, they will have more money to make weapons that will go against the United States people. Just recently there was a submarine that was found off the coast of South Korea with tin cans that came directly from America. So I propose that we don't help the North Korean military um, in their efforts against the United States and their efforts against South Korea in the world. Thank you. target argument, why they they changed their plan in the middle, and why that matters to you as a judge. Secondly, I'm going to go over the effects on power and diplomacy through this plan, because that's the main thing that we're discussing. What are going to be, the, of the, if you enact this plan, what are the effects on the dis distribution of power between the United States and North Korea, and what's the effect on diplomacy between the two countries? So I'm just going to discuss that and the effects of their plan. So, the first is the moving target argument. Now, the PMC, the, leader, um, the first government speaker stated that it was general food aid under the, the discussed 
um, LEMP plan. So what that means is that they're just, that's what generally food aid is, and under that plan they say that they are going to enact in this round, what that means is they're going to send things like grain, they just send these big bulk items to the country, and then the leaders distribute that food to the people. You don't send them warm meals, you don't send people over there who are bringing soup to individual North Koreans. That's just not the way this plan works, however, that's what, that's what their second speaker stated. The second speaker said, oh, no, there's no way there's corruption, because individual people go into North Korea and distribute, are personally delivering food to the people. However, the first thing, this isn't under the plan um, that their first speaker said, and um, it's also completely infeasible, but they, they say this in the middle of the round, that was their plan. They said this because we, we were talking about how um, the food aid is misused, that the military takes it. They also said in their first speech that the military takes the food aid. So we'd all agree to that, but they were trying to counter this claim by saying, oh no, we're giving it directly to these people. This is a clear change in their plan. You can see this change throughout the round. And you should vote against them just based on this. This should be, this should be an a priori issue in the round, or the first thing you should consider when you're judging this round. So this is abusive, firstly, because they're changing their plan in the middle, so it takes away ground from the opposition team. We have an argument this plan assuming that they were talking about, oh, we're just going to deliver it the way that food has always been delivered and the way they said under their plan, and they changed it in the middle, which means that if you vote under their second plan, that, uh, our first, their second contention about how they abuse food aid would be, um, would be nullified, that you, should, you shouldn't vote on that, because the first plan they stated, the point we ran our two points under, was um, the original plan. So it's abusive towards the opposition team. It takes away ground in, in this round. Um, secondly, it sets a precedent. If you vote for the, even with this moving target, it allows government teams, uh, it allows this government team, government teams all around the country to, mil to manipul manipulate the debate to benefit themselves, to change their plan throughout the round to, in a way that benefits them because we've pointed out a flaw in it. So um, what that means is that you're allowing this team to continue to do this. They'll say, oh, judges don't really care about moving targets. We're going to keep doing this. And also it's a precedent at this debate. So this is really important. This is an important tournament. So you need to vote on them just based on this issue. Make a point that government teams need to stick with their plan, not be abusive through this. Now going into my second voter issue about the effects on power and diplomacy. Now, clearly in this round, you're going, we've all contended they're going back on the United States and North Korea's terms of agreement. We agreed that they would up, that they would end that they would pause the nuclear program, we would resume aid. However, they broke this agreement when they launched the missile, and so we're just going to give them aid anyways. This goes against what we previously said. So it appeases North Korea. It means that they can do anything they want without punishment. As I stated in my first speech, they haven't seen a major punishment since the 19th. 1950s, but with any of their actions, any of their nuclear things with nuclear programs, anything they've done against the people. So this is really taking a stance against North Korea, giving the United States power in the relationship. We both agree, um, we both set this agreement, and so we need to not go back on that. We need to maintain this front, this organized, um, this powerful front, and what that means it gives the United States negotiating power. Because the United States um, is able to maintain this with North Korea, because they broke the agreement, so they, under the agreement, we were not going to give them food aid anymore. So if we can stick by this, if the United States can just stick with what they've done before, it gives us power because North Korea understands, oh, the United States is going to uphold its threats. Um, the United States is going to do what it says, um, and so we're not going to give them food aid. That means that North Korea cannot do anything they want anymore. They can't just go launching missiles and enriching uranium under a plan. For, um, and so, firstly, the thing that happens when we just appease them, we allow them to continue launching missiles and enriching uranium. The first thing is it's dangerous. Um, it's dangerous to have North Korea be an increased nuclear power. My partner talked about this. Um, how, since they can keep doing all these things, increasing the weapon program, it's bad because, of, and, and by voting for the plan, you're um, indirectly make, giving them more money to fund their weapon program. Because as my partner discussed, the money that they that we give them on food aid is money that they don't have to spend getting food for their military and, and for their people if you believe that food aid goes to the people. So the government will have to spend more money on food if we suspend this aid, and that money will come away from the nuclear program. So if you, But if you vote for the affirmation, more money is going to the nuclear program because they don't have to spend that money on food. And so what it means when we're, when we're virtually supporting their nuclear program is that we're helping them to launch these missiles, to enrich uranium, and do things against the United States and its allies, particularly South Korea, which is in a very vulnerable location. So another precedent that sets by voting for the affirmation team is that it illegit illegitimizes all of the United States threats around the world. So we make this threat, we say, we're going to stop giving you food aid, because we know that food aid is something they want. Um, they try to say, oh, no, North Korea doesn't want our food aid, but that's completely ridiculous. You, um, either way you vote on this right, if you believe that the people are getting food aid, of course the people want food aid, and the government wants to, wants to keep the people alive, so they'll have people in North Korea. If you believe that the, that the food aid is abused and goes to the military, of course the government wants to feed their military. And, if you, and I stated under, in my first attempt that it was sold in the domestic market, that they're trading it around. And they didn't really contend with these facts. So, um, of course they want this food because it helps them economically. But, and so what we're doing by saying, okay, we'll give you the food anyways, it, it illegitimizes all of the United States threats around the world. We tell all sorts of countries that we're going to stop doing things, but if we acquiesce to this one claim, or to this one demand, then it kind of says, oh, the United States isn't really strong anymore, we're just going to do whatever you want to do. So I urge you to vote for the opposition team on first the moving target issue, uh, the moving target issue, and second, the effects on power diplomacy. Thank you.
this speech, I just really want to clear things up and slow things down and make sure everything's really clear in what's happening in this debate. I'm going to start by going into what uh, the leader of the opposition team said, kind of clean up their voter issues, but why they don't really stand in this debate and then present our own voter issues. So their first voter issue was that of moving target reviews. So I personally find it very interesting that they really spent two and a half minutes of their entire speech on this idea, but really it's a non-withstanding issue. They really seem to be confused with what we're doing in this plan. As I said in my speech, we are going to be bringing 2,400 tons of food. And I said it would be administered by foreign aid programs. I made this very clear within my speech. And they even stood up and asked for questions, and I asked, and I accepted one, and they did not even check to clarify it at this point. So we can really see that they're confused with what's happening. In the past, when they brought up the examples of the UN aid or something like that, that was money being brought in. What we're doing in our plan is bringing food aid with foreign, uh, with uh, people actually going in and helping distribute the aid. We made that very clear in our first speech. I don't have time to get through all your questions. We'll take them at the end if I have time. So really we can see that this whole idea of moving target abuse should not make any sense as I mentioned it in my first speech and then my partner continued to bring up the same idea. So really this shouldn't stand. It's just kind of been a waste of time in this debate. Their second contention about, or their second voter issue about effects of power and diplomacy. I'll get into it more later. And But their final one about illegit illegitimizes threats around the world. I'm actually going to be saying that this is not true at all. What it does is it proves the United States image. Really they use the word threats. This is an extremely important word that you're looking at is in the debate. They're really using the, setting up the example that the United States is threatening everyone around the world and really setting up a negative precedent and really being the police of the world. However, we can see what our plan is doing is showing that the United States takes a precedent over human life and valuing human life and really improves our image internationally. So it's really not going to be setting a negative precedent. It's going to be improving the United States image. So really, if we look to their entire case, it really has no negative impacts. They've claimed two disadvantages to our case with really no impacts. They said it would that we need to uphold our negotiating power. And they never really said why or why this is bad the way it's happening right now. However, they claim that it makes us look weak and we're being giving in to our demands. However, if we look to what's happening right now, North Korea does not want the United States in their country to not want them involved. That's why they launched the missile in the first place. That's something my partner said that they failed to respond to. By giving in to their demands would be not to give food because that means there's more United States influence there. So really, we are not giving in to their demands by going in. So really, we can see that this is not true at all. I already said I don't have time to take your question. And then their second contention about food aid really just comes out of a misunderstanding for what we're doing in our plan. We're not providing money or just handing off stuff to the government. We're going to be going in and administering the food aid ourselves, as I said in my speech and my partner continued to say. So we can see their entire case, all of their theory arguments, all of their disadvantages don't really stand as they have no impacts or no links. They don't really make any sense in their relationship to this debate. So with that being said, I'm going to be going into the main benefits of our plan on voter issues. Our first is that of international relationships, that there's a lot of benefit to there. They said that it will have really have a, a negative effects on our power and diplomacy as we'll look weaker. As I said, this isn't true. We'll end up looking as a more, uh, it'll improve our image in the long term and really uh, help our negotiations with the United States, or with uh, North Korea as we will have more eyes and ears there. So when we're looking at our relationship with our North Korea, that's really the important thing. There's more influence, there's a more American influence on the North Korean population. This is something they really failed to respond to in this entire debate and just assumed we were going direct, directly to the government, just giving stuff off the government and running away. That's not what we're doing, however, we're giving food to the people in our plan. That's what we said. So it'll help our relationship with North Korea in that sense as we have more information on what's going on there and we have more communication with the people there. And then also, let's look to our relationship with China. They really said that this doesn't make any sense as we're only economic partners. However, if we look to, as my partner said, the economy is based completely on trust and really goes out of other things like that. There's a lot of criticisms about, and a lot of issues that aren't economic that the United States and China have, and this is something they failed to respond to as well. So really, we can see China is not angry with North Korea. That's something that they've said completely, uh, repeatedly in their speech. That's not actually true. China's just overwhelmed. It doesn't have enough space or enough resources to take care of all of these refugees, and that's something that we're going to be solving, increasing our relationship with China, which will then have increased our trust with them and in the long term have numerous benefits, including that of the, uh, the Syrian Assad regime. So really we can see that there's a clear benefit there internationally. A final voter issue is that of the quality of life in North Korea. They seem to think that just because we're benefiting the North Korean people, we're not benefiting the United States as well. However, in my first speech and my partner's speech, we made it very clear why helping the quality of life of the North Korean citizens will help the United States in the long term. First of all, what we see will happen is that it will help to stabilize the country. A lot of the times when North Korea acts most violently is when the people are starving. It's show that it has more power. By giving people resources, the North Korean government is not going to need to react so violently internationally all the time. It will help there as well. So really, can really see that's a clear benefit there. And also, it will be improving the quality of life of the people, improving our international image, something I've talked about repeatedly. So what this debate really comes down to that the opposition team doesn't really understand what we're doing in this debate, and from that steps a whole bunch of fallacies and fallacious arguments that don't really make any sense. So when you're looking to this round, you should be voting on the benefits our team has created to help the United States and to help North Korea in the long term. So for all of these reasons, I already strong vote in favor of the government team. Thank you.
step outside? Um, you dare? You, you don't have to go outside. You're just closing. Yeah.